sinusoidal transformations, essentially what we're going to be looking at is a repeat from our first unit. So when we had y equals f of x and transform that to y equals a times f of b times x minus h plus k, okay, if our function is y equals sine x, that will be transformed to y equals a times sine b times x minus h plus k. Now, the part that's a little bit different is that for some reason, for sinusoidal functions, we typically change the h and k to c and d. Okay, so it'll look more like this sine b times x minus c plus d. Okay, and actually, I don't, I, I want to look into why I can't, there's, I can't remember if there's a reason for it or not. Um, but this is sort of the notation that you see. So if you were asked to write a function for a particular graph in this format, you wouldn't see the letters H and K, you would see C and D. But essentially, they do the same thing. Okay? Now, um, the parameters will affect the graph the same as the parameters affect any graph. But there's some new vocabulary that we looked at yesterday that uh, we should talk about when we're looking at these parameters, because particularly in a context situation, that's going to become significant to the context. Okay, so A, what we saw, this is the vertical stretch factor. Vertical stretch factor is actually the absolute value of A, which is consistent with, with what we saw um, with all of our other types of functions. But the A value also showed up very clearly on the graph. So what was that A value? Yeah, it's the amplitude, right? So the absolute value of A is equal to the amplitude. Okay. Now, if A is negative, then there will also be a vertical reflection in the x-axis. Okay. Now the B value, this is a horizontal stretch factor, okay? Um, and that's consistent here as well. This is the horizontal stretch factor is one over the absolute value of B. But where did we see that B value or what did that B value really connect to when we were looking specifically at a sinusoidal function? The period, yeah. So B is actually the number of periods within 2 pi or within 360 degrees. And so uh, this is going to connect to the period. The period of the function will be 2 pi over the absolute value of B. Okay. The absolute value of B, I suppose, tells you the number of periods that you see within 2 pi. And then, of course, if B is negative, there's a horizontal reflection in the y-axis. Okay. Um, all right. Now, the other two values we actually haven't specifically looked at yet, but D replaces K. That's a vertical translation. Okay, so the graph is going to move up or down. So we talked about a number of characteristics of a sinusoidal function yesterday. So what is the D, what, where does that show up on the graph? So far we've only looked at graphs that have a D value of zero. What did that zero connect to? Yeah? Was it if the graph was 
not no so the deep moving it up or down is not going to connect to where it would where it's sine or cosine mm, not necessarily it could be but not necessarily it will affect the y-intercept because the y-intercept is going to move up or down uh where are we yes it's the midline right so for a normal sine and cosine graph without vertical translations the midline is right in the middle, which is the x-axis, okay? If you move it up or down, that d value will become the new midline. That's the center of the wave, okay? So the d is a vertical translation, but the property that it really connects to in terms of, you know, if you were to describe what does this sinusoidal function look like, and you say, oh, it has a midline of five, that's really easy to visualize. You know, 5 is here, and then it's going to oscillate about 5. Okay? So D is the vertical translation, and it will also be the midline of the graph. Okay? So it's sort of the vertical... Um, distance that's halfway between the max and the min, right in the middle. Okay, and then finally C, uh, this is a horizontal translation. When we're talking specifically about trig functions, we call the horizontal translation a phase shift because we think about the start as a specific phase in the cycle. And so if we move the start left or right, we're shifting the face. Okay, so I'm kind of running out of room, but this is a horizontal translation, and it's called the phase shift. Of the function. Okay, so when I am looking at uh, working with transformations of trig functions, I always sort of have two pictures in my mind. One of them, and really the pictures that I'm going to have in my mind to, um, to work with transformations is the same picture that I would have for any other function. It's the base function. What are we transforming? So you want to be able to visualize y equals sine x at least for one cycle, negative one, one, zero, two pi, right? So you want to know that a sine function starts at zero, it's on the upswing, it ends at zero, okay? And you also want to know, uh, you know, the amplitude, max and min. And with cosine, Okay. The cosine function has the same amplitude and the same period, but it has sort of a different starting point, right? So this starts at 1 and ends at 1. So the middle is negative 1. I kind of do this to guide myself. Um, there we go. Okay, so that's the basic cosine function. And the important piece for this is, you know, looking at any trig function, it's usually pretty easy to see where the midline is and where the amplitude is. But in terms of um, the phase shift in particular, moving it left or right, because it's cyclical and it keeps repeating and repeating and repeating, if you're not really clear of sort of the quote unquote beginning of a function without transformations, then you might get a little bit confused, okay? So when I look at this first function, uh, we want to write this one in terms of sine, okay? So when I look at the sine function, what I wanna pay attention to, one thing that I wanna pay attention to is um, does it start in the same place that a normal sine function starts? And I can see, yes, it does, because when x equals 0, it's in the middle on the upswing. Okay? So I'm not going to have any sort of phase shift here. And in fact, I shouldn't have even given that to you. But you can see from the structure of the equation, we're really only looking at two parameters here. But I'm just sort of going through the process of 
what I would do if I didn't have this and I just had to come up with an equation for this function. Okay, so I can see, okay, it's starting in the same place. I also see the midline is at zero as well because the midline is right in the middle of the min and the max. And the min is at negative three, the max is at three. The middle of that is at zero. Okay, so I uh, know that my C value and my D value equals zero. Okay, now in terms of my amplitude, what's the amplitude of this function? Three, and is there a reflection? No, so that's why it's important to know, okay, starts in the middle on the upswing. If it started on the downswing, then there would be a reflection there. Okay, so A equals three. What about B? How are we gonna figure out B? Yeah, we have to work with the period, right? So the period equals two pi over the absolute value of B. And what we can see that one period over here is three pi over two. Okay, so if I am trying to isolate B here, I think what I'll do, and actually before I, what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of this absolute value sign so, or symbols. So I'm gonna look at this graph and decide right now, has there been a horizontal reflection? No. So I know B is greater than zero because there's no horizontal reflection. So I'm actually gonna, right now when I'm subbing in, just make this two pi over B so that I don't have to worry about that, okay? I think what I'll do now is multiply both sides by two B to undo the denominators. So if I multiply by two B on, like I'm gonna kind of distribute this in. If I multiply by two B over here, uh, the twos will cancel and I'll get, get three pi times B and on the right side, the b's will cancel, so 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi. And then I can divide both sides by 3 pi. Okay, and I can see the pi's cancel, so b equals 4 over 3. Okay, and so my equation is y equals 3 sine 4 over 3b, or x rather. y equals 3 sine 4 over 3x. Okay, uh, this function over here, we're gonna write this one in terms of cosine. So one thing that I'm gonna do at the start is just compare it to this one. And what I can see is it starts in the same place right, in terms of its period. So there's no uh, phase shift, there's no horizontal translation. Um, the center is also at zero, midline is at zero, so there's no vertical translation. Um, there's no reflections, okay. Um, so A is gonna be positive, B is also gonna be positive. There has been a change in amplitude and in period, so I have to figure out those two values, okay. So what is the amplitude of this function? Four, right? A equals four. And then what about the B value? How am I gonna get that? Yeah, I need to, to get the B value, I need to look at the period, okay? And the period is two pi over B. And that period happens in this case to be pi. Okay. So this one you could probably work out B in your head. Two pi divided by what is equal to pi? Two, two. yeah. So B equals two. Right, and that kind of makes sense because if the period is one pi, then two periods will fit within two pi, okay? So my equation is y equals four cosine 
2x. Okay. So use your knowledge of transformation, using your knowledge of transformations, uh, graph this function. Y equals cosine x plus 45 degrees minus 2. Okay? So it looks like this function, uh, the domain is going to be in degrees because we can see over here the phase shift or horizontal translation has been given to us in terms of degrees. So the first thing that I'm going to do to set up my uh, graph is to look at my scale on my axes. Okay, and I'll start with the x uh, scale. Uh, the other thing actually before I do that is there's also been a vertical translation to down, right? So one thing that I like to do also is almost like an asymptote. I'm gonna just draw in the midline because it really helps me with guiding uh, my graph, knowing that that's in the middle. Okay, the amplitude is still one. So really what that means is that from the midline, I'm gonna go up one and down one. Okay, so if you wanted to do this as well, the entire graph is going to exist between these two horizontal lines. Okay, I go up one from the midline and down one from the midline if that's my amplitude. Okay. Now I'm also going, I also want to pay attention to my periods so that I can think about my x scale. Uh, does the period change here? No, because the b value is 1. So in this case, because we're in degrees, the period will be 360 degrees. Okay, so let's see, I have 6, 8, 10, 12. Now, just to kind of make my life easier, um, 45 degrees is what portion of 360? What fraction of 360 is 45 degrees? Almost. How many? An eighth, yeah. Because think like 90 degrees is a quarter, so 45 degrees is an eighth. So I normally make one full cycle 12 units, but knowing that my sh phase shift is going to be, an, this is essentially an eighth of a rotation to the left. 45 degrees to the left is an eighth of a rotation. I'm going to make sure that my scale in this case is some multiple of eight because it just sort of makes it easier to find those key points. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to make this, uh, each of these, let's say 90 degrees. Okay, because then I know if I am shifting 45 degrees left, then ordinarily with a cosine function, I would start here, right? And maybe actually what I'll do is I'm going to do the key points in a different color if there was no horizontal translation. So if there was no horizontal translation, it would be start at 1, end at 1. The middle is at negative 1. And because, by the way, it's not really negative 1, it's negative 3. But because I put that midline in and those two horizontal lines for my max and my min, I can work from there. Okay? Um, and then in between, it would be here and here. Right? So it would kind of look like that. Now what I need to think about is that I've shifted 45 degrees to the left. And so all of these points... The way that I set up my scale is that one little square is worth 45 degrees. So all of these points are now going to shift one left. So this one's going to move to there. This will move to there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so this essentially would be one cycle. Okay, now what happens is that this repeats. So once you have the one cycle down, you can sort of draw another one. 
Sometimes you'll be asked to draw over a specific domain and then just draw an arrow on the end. Okay, so let's just summarize some of the analysis we did here. Uh, there is no change in amplitude or period and no reflections. Okay, what has happened is that the function has moved left 45 degrees and down two units. So horizontal translation left 45 degrees and vertical translation down two. Okay. Now, unless there's a context involved, for any sine or cosine function, the domain will always just be that x is an element of the reals or theta is an element of the reals, whatever variable you're using. So for domain, okay. Now, every sine and cosine function has a limited domain, uh, sorry, range though. And we've now moved everything down two units. Right? So now our minimum is at negative 3 and our maximum is at negative 1. Okay? And in fact, basically all of this information should really just go here. Right? But honestly, to be able to graph this, I kind of have to go through that analysis first compare to y equals cosine x as I go. Um, so I'm just going to stick all of that in there. Okay? All right. Let's look at this question. So sketch the graph of y equals 2 sine theta plus pi over 2 plus 2. And we're going to do this over two cycles and then compare it to y equals sine x. So let's do that comparison first. Compare it to y equals sine x. Okay. Uh, what has happened to the amplitude? Yeah, the amplitude is now 2. Okay. Uh, what's happened to the period? Same, because the B value is 1, right? So period is the same, which be, we're in radians here, so it's 2 pi. Um, what has happened to the midline? It's gone up 2. Yeah, so there's a vertical translation up 2. So... The midline is 2. Okay. And what about the horizontal translation? Pi over two. Left pi over 2. Yeah. 180 degrees or pi over 2. Okay. So uh, there's a horizontal translation of pi over 2 left. And so essentially the phase shift... is negative pi over 2. The phase shift means my phase is now sharp, the phase in my uh, cycle is now starting uh, negative, or sorry, pi over 2 to the left because that phase shift is negative. Okay, so let's uh, set this up. So the first thing that I like to do now, one thing that's already on here for us is we've already got the scale on our axis, so that's kind of nice. We don't have to worry about that. So what I'm going to do is set up my midline first. That's the middle of the graph. And then work to get my max and my min from my amplitude. So here's the middle. It's midline. Okay. Amplitude is 2. So it's going to go 2 above and 2 below. Okay. So 2 above is over here. And 2 below is 
distance along the x-axis. Okay, then, you know, what we've now taken care of is all of the vertical stuff. Okay, so now we're going to worry about the horizontal stuff. Now, the horizontal stuff, because the period is 2 pi, that's kind of nice. So what I'm going to do is, in a different color, I'm going to plot the points for y equals sine x. Assuming, like you can kind of assume that the midline is the x-axis and this line 4, that dotted line is now 1 and this line is negative 1. And then it's almost like you're graphing y equals sine x. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to plot, I'm not going to worry about the phase shift for now. I'm just going to plot my normal like sine x graph. So here's 2 pi, it's going to end, I do beginning and end, I like to do it that way. Uh, the middle is pi, it's back to the middle. And then in between, right there, it's up there. And in between here, so that's six units. So three, it's down there. Okay, so it would be like this. Up, down. But what's going to happen is that all of those uh, points are going to move pi over 2 to the left. Now, how many squares is pi over 2? Yeah, in this case. How many squares is pi? Right? 0 to pi is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 little squares. So how many squares is pi over 2? 3, exactly. Yeah, so I'm now going to take each of these points and move them 3 left. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 and one, two, three, okay? So this now looks like this. Okay, that is actually the cosine function, right? So this is what I mean that if you move a sign left or right, then you can sort of lay a sine function over a cosine function. Okay, so I'm going to do another cycle. So one, two, three, up, back to the middle, one, two, three, down to zero, and one, two, three, back up to the middle. Right, and this would keep going this way. Okay, and then there we have two cycles. I see two. Like th from here to here is one period. And from here to here is another period. Right? Yeah. OK. All right. Sketch a graph of y equals 2 cosine x plus pi minus 1 over two cycles, okay? So let's start, oh, that's why it's D, vertical displacement. Maybe that's why we use D for, for the K instead of, you know. Okay, so let's just uh, do this analysis first. Vertical displacement or midline. What's the midline? Yeah, the midline. Sometimes, actually, this is also called the median, midline or median. To be honest, it should really be called the mean, if you're thinking in terms of averages, but that's okay. That, it's referred to the midline or the median. Um, this is down one. Okay. Uh, what about the amplitude? Amplitude is two. And there's no reflection going on here. Okay. So actually, before I even start looking at my period, horizontal shifts, domain, and range, I'm going to do the same thing that I've done for the other examples, where I draw a horizontal line for my midline, and then figure out the max and the min from the amplitude. So my midline in this case is negative 1. Okay. And my amplitude is 2. 
So I'm going to go two above and two below. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about the period. What is the period of this function? Yeah, it's the period is 2 pi over b, which is 2 pi over 4. So that's pi over 2. Now what this is really going to help me with is my scale. Because if my period is 2 pi, then, sorry, if my period is 2 pi, then I'd probably, if I want to make the, if I want to see two cycles, make here from zero, make this 2 pi. But if my period is just pi over 2, then I can spread that out a little bit more, right? So I'm going to say, okay, let's see, I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 squares to work with. I'm going to stick with 8. I'm going to make this guy, okay, what I mean by that, 2, 4, 6, 8, I'm going to make this pi. And this is going to be pi over 2. Okay. Now the reason why I do 8 is because when you're looking at a sine and cosine function, there's sort of four key points in the cycle, right? There's in sine it goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, back to 0. Okay, so I want like a multiple of 4 so that it's easy for me to find those four points. Um, and then, uh, so I'll work with my period to kind of set my scale. And you, you, it's not the only way to do it. You could make the 12 pi, and then each of those 8s, if we're doing, um, or if you think about it, okay, let's do it this way. If the scale was that pi equals 12, then pi by 2 would be 6. So divide that into fourths to get those two, those four points. One and a half squares for each of those four points, right? Um, all right. Now, if I sort of draw my cosine graph starting here, it would normally look like this. So I'll do this in a different color because we haven't worked with the phase shift yet. It would normally go like this, up there, 0, negative 1, 0, 2. Okay. But what's happened is that all of these points have moved pi units to the left. Okay, so the horizontal shift is pi units left. So I have to think about, okay, how many squares is pi? Yeah. Okay, so this guy is going to move here. Eight units left. This guy is going to move here. This guy is going to move here. This guy is going to move here and there. Okay. Now what you'll see is that if we continue this, if we continue this pattern, and do another one, and do another one, right? Well, now this phase overlaps with the original. And so sometimes if you do a phase shift that's a multiple of the period, you're going to get the exact same graph. It's going to look identical. Okay? So we don't actually see the phase shift in this case because it's a multiple of the period. It's like if I took y equals sine x and moved it 2 pi to the right, it's going to look identical because that's just the next cycle. Okay? Domain and range. Domain is... This is x. x is an element of the real numbers. And the range, what's the min and what's the max? Yeah, negative 3 to, uh, yeah, 1. Okay, let me ask you something. 
if you know the midline and the amplitude, can you figure out the range? Yeah. So how do we get the minimum value? Where does that negative 3 come from? The minimum value? I mean, think about how I set up those dotted lines. How did I get to that one? Yeah. I started at the midline. Now, the parameter for the midline in the equation is d, and then I had to subtract the amplitude. Okay? Now, just to, you know, in this case we subtracted the amplitude, but if the amplitude, if the a value was negative, then we take the absolute value. So it's d minus the absolute value of a, right? Or midline minus the amplitude. The maximum, yeah, I start at the midline and I add the amplitude, right? So this is midline plus the amp. Okay, so if you see the equation of a sinusoidal function, sine or cosine, then you can work from the equation and just looking at the uh, amplitude, which is the vertical stretch and the midline, which is the vertical translation, and you can get the range from those two values. Okay, so this is good to know because think about those questions where we, give, we don't give you numbers and we just give you letters. So if the letters were in there for the parameter, right, you may have to work from the letters to get the range, for example, the minimum and the maximum. Okay, so now what we're going to do is practice writing some equations, right? So what we did uh, a few minutes for the past few minutes is we've got an equation, now we write the graph, right? Or draw the graph, sketch the graph. We're going to go in the opposite order in this case, so we're going to start with uh, the graph and try and write, write out an equation for the graph, okay? so. When I am doing this sort of thing, now firstly, we're told to do this one in terms of sine. And if I were just coming up with an equation and not given this specific instruction, I would probably choose to use sine as well because when I look at when x equals zero, that's the start of the sine function, right? If I chose to use cosine, this is the start of the sine, sine uh, the cosine function rather. So now if I chose to use cosine, I can do it that way, but now I have to include a phase shift, right? If I choose to use sine, then there's not going to be any phase shift. That C value will be zero, okay? So I'm going to choose to use sine, and in fact, that's what given to you, but if you're just told to write an equation, you can choose, okay? Um, all right, so the C value is zero. There's no phase shift because I can see at the start it's in the middle on the upswing. Uh, what's the amplitude of this function and what's the midline? The midline is at negative 4. What about the amplitude? The amplitude is 3, okay? There's no phase shift. Okay, and what about the period? Well, there's, there is a period. <laughs> it's 2 pi, yeah. Okay, so in terms of my parameters, if I can do this analysis, now I know, okay, midline is negative 4, so d equals negative 4. The amplitude is 3, a equals 3. There's no phase shift, c equals 0. The period is 2 pi, b equals 1. And I have my equation. So this is just going to be y equals uh, 3 sine, so 
B is 1 and C is 0, so this is just x and then minus 4. Okay. All right, let's look at this second function. So this looks like it's a cosine function, or we want to write it in terms of cosine. Now, if I was just told, hey, write out a function for this graph, there's no sort of, personally, I wouldn't have a preference around sine or cosine because I'm going to have a sh phase shift no matter what. When you look at when x equals 0, this point over here is the, it isn't the start of the sine function or the cosine function. Okay? So if we use cosine, then you kind of want to pay attention to this point because that's going to give us our phase shift. That's the start of a cycle of cosine. Uh, before I do that, though, um, let's take a look at a couple of other parameters. So let's talk about amplitude and midline. What's the midline of this function? <coughs> Zero. Yeah. And the amplitude is three. Okay. Uh, okay. What about the period? Okay, so when you are trying to work out the period, firstly, all we know about this scale is that one block equals pi over 3. So to figure out the period, I would probably write a few more values into the scale because it's hard for me to count by pi by 3s, right? So pi by 3, this is 2 pi by 3, this is pi, right? So it looks like 3 units is worth pi, so I'm just going to start that would be 2 pi. OK, so what is the period of this function? It's 2 pi, yeah. To figure out the period, you can either start when x equals 0 and see where's the next, where's the soonest time that it's at the, that exact uh, phase of the cycle. And that happens right here. Okay. Or you don't have to start at 0. You could also go, right, this is 2 pi. You could also go max to max, right? This is 2 pi by 3. This is uh, 2 pi plus a third, 7 pi by 3. This one's going to be 8 pi by 3, right? 8 pi by 3 minus 2 pi by 3, that's the length of that interval, is 6 pi by 3, which is also 2 pi. So you just need to find two points that are at the same, um, same point in the cycle. Now, the reason why I mention this is because in this case, I would totally start at zero, right? I wouldn't start anywhere else because I can see it's very clear. But when you are graphing an application where it might not be so clear exactly when it hits that point in the cycle, sometimes it's really helpful to go max to max or min to min, because then you can use your graphing calculator to find what's the x value of the first max compared to the x value of the second max. Take the difference. Now you have your period. Okay. Um, okay, so the period is 2 pi. Okay, what about the phase shift? If this is a cosine function. This is normally where it starts, right? Now that's not at zero, it's two pi over three. Yeah, so the phase shift is two pi over three, right? Okay, so if I was uh, writing an equation for this function, the midline is the d value. Right, so d equals 0, amplitude is the a value, period is 2 pi, so that means b is 1, and 2 over 3 pi right, c equals 2 pi over 3. Okay, so now I can put this all together. I'll do it down here. Actually, no, I'll do it here. So y equals a3 cosine of b is 1, so uh, x minus 2 pi over 3. 
and then plus zero. So that's it. Midline's at zero. Okay. Now, this is not the only equation that you could use with a cosine, actually, uh, to represent this function because it's cyclical, right? So I could also write it as having a phase shift of 8 pi over 3 right. I'd see the same graph. Or I could start over here, let's say. Now this has gone pi by 3 left, but now because I'm starting at the bottom instead of the top, my A value, my amp, is going to be negative 3 instead of 3. Okay? So there's lots and lots, there's infinite different ways that you can write an equation to represent a um, sinusoidal function, right? Now, certain things are not going to change. The midline's not going to change. The, um, the period is not going to change. The B value <coughs> will not change. Um, what could change, though, is the amplitude could become negative if you incorporate a reflection. And then also, um, you, could, you could make the phase shift different. Okay. Yes. And in fact, we could write this function in terms of sine as well. Because take a look at this. This is the start of the, fu of the sine function. That's pi by 6. So you can write a sine function with all the same parameters, except the phase shift is now pi by 6 units right. Right? And we may ask you, hey, write this. Oh, here we go. Here's an example of exactly that. Here's a function. Write, a, write an equation for this graph in terms of sine and in terms of cosine. Okay? So let's take a look. Uh, here's our graph. I'm going to take a look at where the midline is. So it looks like the midline is at negative 1. And the max is 2 up, the min is 2 down. So my amplitude is 2. Okay? And that's going to be the same for sine and for cosine. Uh, so what about my period? So far we have an amplitude of 2 and a midline of negative 1. What is the period of this thing? Yeah, 2 pi over 3. Because if you start here, when x equals 0, the next time it's at that stage of the cycle, where it's on the midline but on the downswing, is at 2 pi by 3. The period is 2 pi over 3. So the b value is 2 pi. OK, so actually, I'm skipping ahead here. but. This is handy to know. So the one that's on your formula sheet is that period equals 2 pi over b. And just for simplicity's sake, let's assume that there's no horizontal uh, reflection, so b is positive. Um, if you isolate this equation for b, you're going to get that b equals 2 pi over the period. Okay. Now. You're not given this version of the formula. You're given this one. So if you don't remember that, you have to be able to work with the algebra to isolate the unknown. But you do, we tend to do this thing a lot. So this is kind of a nice to know thing. OK? So b is 2 pi over the period. So it's 2 pi over 2 pi over 3. Right? Now, this is fraction divided by fraction, so 2 pi over 1 times the reciprocal, 3 over 2 pi, is just 3. Okay, so for both of these functions, we have three of the four parameters. We just need that c value. That's all we need. And so, essentially, all we're going to do is figure out where the start of each cycle is and how much have we moved right or left. So if we're looking at A and we're talking about a sine function, 
right? The start of the sine function. And also, you guys, we're told here that the amplitude is positive. Okay? If the amplitude is positive, you can't have a reflection. You have to start for sine in the middle on the upswing. Okay, so that's the start of sine, and it looks to me like it has been moved pi over 3 right. So this function is going to be y equals a, a is 2, sine b, b is 3, uh, pi over 3 right, x minus pi over 3, plus d, d is negative 1. Oh, maybe I'll just make this minus 1. You could do plus negative 1 as well. There we go. Yes? Oh, yeah, totally. You could also start here if you want. And then this would be plus pi over 3. Totally. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, there are multiple solutions, infinite solutions, to what sign function can you use to represent this uh, this graph. Yeah, totally. Okay. Uh, the second one is a cosine function. So everything is going to be the same here except for the phase shift. So um, we could, let's go with the negative this one. You could start here for cosine or here. Right? So you could have a C value of negative pi by 6. Or this one is in between pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3. So that's uh, 3 pi over 6. No, what am I? 2 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 6. Oh, that's pi, uh, pi by 2. Half a pi. Yeah. Because a third of a pi, if there's a common denominator, um, we want to know what's right in the middle of a third and two thirds. What's right in the middle of a third and a two thirds is a half. Okay, so um, you could either say that it's shifted uh, pi by two to the right, or if two squares is one third pi, one square is gonna be one sixth pi, or pi by six to the left. Let's put both down. 2 cosine 3 x plus pi by 6 minus 1 or y equals 2 cosine 3 x minus pi by 2 minus 1, right? And this one, let's do the or for this case too. You could also start here going left. So now we're going left pi by 3, so that's plus pi by 3 minus 1. Okay? So it just depends on whether you start the cycle to the left or to the right. Okay? So this chart, I want to go through this really, really quickly because we already sort of talked about this, but this is all around looking at the equation and just figuring out the range. Because usually the domain for these functions is just x is an element of the rails. It's not that interesting. It's not going to change when you do transformations. But the range for these functions is limited, right? So if we start with the basic cosine function, our minimum is at negative 1. And our maximum is at 1. Range is from negative 1 to 1, OK? Now, if we move that function five units up, well, now the range is, uh, the minimum value is going to be at negative four, right? So, you know, the way that I want you to start thinking about this is uh, we start at the midline, we go down by the amplitude and up by the amplitude. So the min is going to be five minus one. And the max is going to be 5 plus 1. And in fact, you can think of, for our first function, the midline's at 0, 0 minus 1, 0 plus 1. Okay, so the range is from 4 to 6. Okay, so our next one, where's the middle of the next function? 
three down. So it's at negative three, that's the middle. And then how much do I go, do I go up or down from the middle? Two. So middle is negative three, down two, negative three plus two. Okay, so that is negative five to negative one. Okay, now sine x, uh, the max min range is the same as cosine x. So think of this as 0 minus 1, 0 plus 1, right? Midline minus the amplitude, midline plus the amplitude. So this is, again, from negative 1 to 1. And for the next one, I've gone down 7. So my midline is now at negative 7. So from the middle, I'm going to go down 1, up 1. Negative 7 minus 1, negative 7 plus 1. So that's negative 8 to negative 6. And then for this next function, um, my midline's at 1. My amplitude is still 3, right? Even though that's negative, it just means that there's going to be a reflection. So when x is 0, it's going to be in the middle on the downswing instead of on the upswing. Okay, but my amplitude is, all, is just a distance from my middle to the max or the min. So this is still middle minus the amplitude, middle plus the amplitude. So that's what? Negative 2 to 4. Okay, so the range is always the middle, median minus the amplitude, median plus the amplitude. Or midline minus amp and then midline plus the amp. Or in terms of the parameters, d minus the absolute value of a, d plus the absolute value of a. Wow, time really flew today. I think we're going to have to finish the last page tomorrow. Okay, because, or not tomorrow. I don't want to see you tomorrow. Oh, sorry. No offense. You probably don't want to see me either tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. So we will end here for today, and we'll, we'll uh, finish that last bit on Monday.